Thank you. So, um, yeah, so we're just going to talk about our trip that the choir took to over spring break to New York City, um, Carnegie Hall. What most of you may not know is like what exactly choir tour is and like the process that we take to actually get to Carnegie Hall. So we left on Sunday morning at like 6.30, which means some of us were up at like 4.30. Just put this in perspective. This is like the entire tour. We're getting up between the hours of 4.30 and 5 every single day. Um, so we get up. We bring all of our luggage to this bus, this huge bus that's parked in front of admin. And we take like 30 minutes to load all the luggage because we have to figure out what that looks like. And we all have to find our own little space on the bus that's probably about less the size of this podium. And we have our little compartment above our head. And that's where we have to put all of our stuff this entire trip. So anyway. On choir tour, that's pretty much what you do every single day. You go to a location, it's like the first day we went to some place in Iowa. You get there and you're like, hey, people, we're going to come sing for you at your church. We don't even know who you are. And so then they're like, yeah, cool, we're going to feed you. So then we eat their food. And then we sing for them because we're like, yeah, we're super thankful that they feed us. And then we like pray and stuff. And then we go and we sing a concert for them. And then they say, they clap and they say thank you and then we leave and we do it all over again. So at the end of the concert, also something to note is like, we don't stay in hotels every night, which is, I mean, it's pretty cool. We stay in host homes. So those are people that go to these churches or people in the community that have heard about our concert and they want to help us out. They house all of us. At the end of the concert, Kathy Walters stands up at the podium and she goes, you and you, you're with this person, and you just go with your people, and they take you for the night, and they have you back in the morning at a certain time to leave and get on the bus again. Um, sometimes these people, depending on where the church is at, they live in town. Sometimes they live 45 minutes away. So <laughs> it just kind of depends on who you get. Um, I know our first night, Mackenzie and I and Alex and Kara, we had to get up. Well, Mackenzie got up at 4 in the morning to take a shower. And then... <laughs> Because it's emphasizing how early in the morning we have to arise and still function. Um, anyway, so but they lived like 45 minutes away, so we had to take like an hour just to get to this church. Anyway, not the point. So, but this is just sort of giving you guys an idea of like what happens on tour. This is our every single day we get up this early morning hour. We all congregate back on the bus. Somehow we're still cordial with each other at that early in the morning. And we get on the bus and we drive for hours and we stop in the next place and do it all over again. Um, so we did that for like four days until we got to New Jersey on Wednesday and that night we stayed in a hotel and then from then on we were in New York. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to talk too much about New York because there are people that will talk about that, like transportation and stuff. But um, I just wanted you guys to kind of like understand that process and kind of what choir tour is like. Every morning when we're on the bus, um, we have devotions, different students lead devotions. Sometimes we have... Um, Encouragement notes, everyone has a secret encourager. So we pass those encouragement notes around the bus, giving gifts and giving things to just encourage people along the way so that everyone still feels like they have someone to keep them going through this entire time. This trip is very, um, it's very draining mentally and physically and sometimes spiritually. And it's just, um, it's a fantastic adventure that we all take together. And, um, but at the same time, when we come back, all of us just crash because <laughs> we're so tired. But um, yeah, so people, we're going to have various choir members come up and talk about their experiences and different aspects of tour. Um, and that first one is going to be Dr. Z. As we go to these host homes and these churches and stuff, we make really good connections with people. we just having conversations with them, staying in their homes. Sometimes those relationships last forever. So he's going to talk about one that is still um, a contact today. And as... Um as the students come up, you'll see uh, a uh, series of photos from tour, just so you can get a little, some images of, uh, of the uh, trip, different scenes of uh, performances and rehearsals and so forth. So if you shout out while I'm talking, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I wanted to uh, tell you about this fellow, his name's Wyman Martin, and last year on Choir Tour, he really kind of became a groupie and so everywhere we went there he was and so we called him this year and I said hey we're going to be in your area would you like to plan a concert so Wyman was super excited and he and his wife 
just were the best hosts at their church in Mount Pleasant, Iowa, Calvary Baptist. And, uh, and so each time that we would sing, uh, I think this trip, probably more than any other, we got uh, tremendous uh, feedback from the people that we sang for. And it was really awesome to see and hear their responses. Even during the course of a concert, people would uh, be in tears and uh, being really engaged in our music. And so it was extremely gratifying. And Wyman just represented kind of the, the way that uh, we were received on this trip. It was certainly uh, a gift from God to be able to experience interacting with these people that just loved on us and did everything they could to make us feel like our trip was worthwhile. So Wyman Martin is my best memory from this trip. <laughs> so as Linnell mentioned, um, whenever we perform at these churches, we stay at host homes afterwards. They house us for the night. They're really great. They feed us breakfast and pack us sack lunches and everything. So that's, that's really awesome. And um, it's cool because we go to these churches and we sing in this concert. And it's kind of a ministry because we're singing about God. But the ministry doesn't just stop there. Um, we make great connections with all of the host families, and it's just really great to talk to them. Sometimes we end up staying up way later than we should because we have to get up early in the morning, but um, there's just so many cool people and so many cool conversations. So actually the first night I had um, a really cool experience because the mom of this family, I stayed up late with her and we got to talking and I asked her, so like, what's your story? How did you... Um, come to be saved and she said well she grew up in um, Chicago she was not in a Christian family um, it was a pretty they were a very low-income family and it wasn't the greatest situation and there were some sidewalk evangelists that came and talked in her neighborhood a lot and after they pressured her for a while she started coming to church with them um, this church that she joined initially and she became saved in was very legalist. They had to wear, you know, floor length dresses and they just had a lot of rules that um, weren't really in line with Christian freedom, I guess you could say. And um, she, came to, she came to realize that after a while and she branched off. She married a Baptist. Her husband is a Baptist, so she joined that church. But she still struggled a lot with guilt over not following these rules because this was, like, the environment that she first found herself in as a Christian, and she still struggled with, like, well, why don't we have to do all these crazy things to earn our salvation or whatever? And I just got to talking to her. I was like, well, you know, we've been talking about this in my ethics class with Dr. Ekman and just talking about, like, why is it that different Christians who follow the same God have different convictions about all sorts of things? And um, we just got to talking like it's really the heart issue. Um, we follow rules because we desire to honor God with our lives. And it's not to earn our salvation. It's not to be more spiritual than other people. We do it because we love God. And it's okay that different people um, do that in different ways sometimes. So um, that was really cool. And then the next morning, we're like packing up the car to leave. And the husband of this wife comes up to me and he says, hey, thank you so much for talking to my wife last night. She was so encouraged by like what you were talking about, the heart issue and stuff. And like she's really struggled with guilt and shame over these things for a long time. And he's like, you really like helped release her from some of that guilt by talking to her about this. So that was just a really um, great encouragement, like what I just thought was a normal conversation, just talking about what I'd learned in class and like seeing that it helped someone out so much was really cool. So uh, I'm pretty much talking about our, like our relationships with each other and kind of the interactions that we try, um, like the attitude that we try to make sure we're always trying to have when we're together. Um, there, <laughs> uh, 
we we start off the tour by um, all like drawing names and like so they each one of us have secret encouragers and so um, throughout the tour we all have a certain person that um, we write, write notes to and like buy snacks or whatever for just to encourage them throughout the tour because sometimes it gets really hard um, when you were wanting to just have some me time and rest but you can't and so it's nice to just get those encouraging notes from each other so we try to make make um, the whole atmosphere a family-like atmosphere so that we're all at least not like trying to cut each other's throats, but that we'll actually <laughs> be able to get along <laughs> somewhat better. <laughs> um, uh, I know like throughout the trip, there's a lot of us, like I was one of those two who were just getting really, really drained and tired because I wasn't able to just rest. Um, but there were a lot of people, this was a lot across the board, there were a lot of people who really were able to support each other when there were a lot of times when one person was down. There were people who went, to them and help to encourage them and support them. So um, choir tour, even though there are a lot of times we were tired and uh, we may not all just have like, you know, super high clouds and butterflies, like we're still, we're still a family. And even though it might be a little tense from time to time, um, we still love each other, so. Hi guys, so uh, me and Derek are going to talk a little bit more about what it was to be in the city. And uh, I guess for me, the really cool thing was that, I mean, New York is just full of a ton of people. And I think when we got to uh, Times Square, it really kind of just daunted me. Like, how do people get anywhere? Like, you guys are like in just huge crowds, just getting from one place to another. And people walk so fast and eat standing up and crazy stuff like that. But... Once at, at some point we got to the Times Square and, and we decided we needed to like sit down and, and so we went to McDonald's and, and so we went up it's in New York City so obviously it's got like two floors or something and we got up to the second floor we had someone order so we didn't get kicked out and after that I think we uh, saw a whole row of uh, just a whole row where no one was sitting except for this one guy that was uh, seemed like he was homeless he got all this stuff together and he just seemed kind of like I don't know, sad, down. Um, so when we got over, um, I went over and sat next to him. And everyone else was ordering. And at some point, I just looked over and said, hey, like, what's your name? Like, tell me about yourself. And uh, I asked him, how's, how's life? And something he told me is, um, I don't really call this living. He said, I, I call this existing. And I was like, man, that's, that's crazy. Um, he told me his whole life story. Um, I don't know, some of it, some of the stuff made sense, other stuff didn't. He told me that he was from uh, Iraq, but like, he didn't seem like he really was from Iraq. And, but then he got to tell me like why he was in New York. He told me that his daughter was there, but that he had at some point got off on the wrong path, slipped into drugs. And at this point he was um, sleeping on the streets. Um, and at some point he just said, well, like, I don't know, I'm still, I'm still existing, but like, I, I just, just pray for me. And I'm like, well, okay, like, really? Like, okay, I'll pray for you. Like, and so once I started praying for him, I just really felt like, I don't know, for me, it made sense why I was there that day. It wasn't just to go to the M&M's or Hershey story. It was to talk to this guy and I didn't know I was going to talk to him. And, you know, I'm sure this guy isn't, you know, hasn't figured it all out yet. But praying for him, I, I asked God that he would just continue to reveal who he was in his life, that he wouldn't let him um, go without hope because that's something that he kept asking. You know, why, why isn't there much hope for my life right now? And, and so once I got done talking with him, it, you could see that his face just really shifted. He wasn't completely down and out. He, he even had a smile, and he just thanked me for talking to him. So. so I just, I have a short little sto uh, encounter that I wanted to share, but before I do that, um, this may be putting some of the crawl members on the spot, but of everybody who was in New York and on the tour, uh, if you had a moment where you felt like 
was unexpected and and you were able to bless somebody or to to share it with somebody would you either stand up or raise your hand so if you look around at some of these people these are people who were in the city on tour blessing people um and and trying to live out the gospel in their you know with their what they were doing and you know i i went through the tour I felt like it was so rushed that half the time I didn't know what I was necessarily thinking about or feeling. Uh, but at the end of tour, I had a neat experience where uh, the people who were riding back in the van were all together. And we were going through the subway to get back to the van to, to head out. And we still had all these subway passes uh, on us. And we, Kathy had given us a whole handful from the rest of the crawl who had didn't need their subway passes anymore and so we were going through the subway station handing out our passes to people who who needed them and we got all the way to the bus terminal and I still hadn't given mine out um, and there was this there was this gal uh, who looked like maybe a college student or you know just right out of college trying to trying to make it in the city and I and it, I just said you know do you need this you know we're heading out of town we're not going to use it anymore it's a it's a seven day unlimited subway pass has still has like three days left on it and just the gratitude and the you could see it in her eyes that she was so surprised and so taken back that somebody would do that for her um, and so I know Julie gave her the rest of her cards too, my wife um, and so just to be able to bless somebody like that even at the very last minute before we were leaving town was something really special so these these trips are really special to people and uh, to on both sides. But uh, I'm going to hand it over to Megan. She's going to tell you a little bit about her experience. Okay, so they gave me the responsibility about actually our time in Carnegie Hall and practicing. Um, I didn't know I was doing this till like two days ago. Um, but so Carnegie Hall for me, at least, I grew up in a pretty musical family, so Carnegie Hall for me was always the dream. For any performer, for any person who's involved in music, that is like the place to go. Um, but it is always kind of unreachable. Um, and for those of you who don't know, when I was a freshman in high school, I was given the opportunity to go to New York City and sing, and we were supposed to sing in Carnegie Hall. But for some reason, um, Something happened with like double booking or we got booted. I don't know how exactly it happened, but we didn't get to sing in Carnegie Hall. And I found that out like a month before we left and I'd already paid for the trip and everything. But my heart was broken because my dream had always been Carnegie Hall and it didn't happen. So this time, a year ago, when Dr. Z was like, hey guys, do you want to go to New York and sing in Carnegie Hall? I was like, sign me up, please, now. Um, so I'd saved up and we were getting, it hadn't hit me that we were actually leaving for New York and actually going to New York until we were in New Jersey and I could see the skyline. Because um, New York, the first time I went was not a fun experience. I hated it the whole time I was there. Um, too many people and too busy. But anyway, so our time in Carnegie Hall was amazing and just our time in New York was amazing. and. It didn't hit me that we were in Carnegie Hall until we were walking on stage for dress rehearsal. And you just look out and it's this whole auditorium of like red velvet seats and balconies and amazing architecture. And I'm just standing there like, I'm in Carnegie Hall. I'm in Carnegie Hall. I'm singing in Carnegie Hall. And Linnell can attest to that because she's the one that signed me up for this. Um, and just the realization of that dream, and it still shocks me that I actually got to sing in Carnegie Hall. And it wasn't that I just got to sing in Carnegie Hall, it was that I was singing with this group of people and the reason why we were singing. We were singing for the glory of God and we weren't just singing any music. We were singing praises to our King on Easter Sunday in Carnegie Hall. Like, the amazingness of that I was just awestruck and the fact that I got that opportunity and the fact that I got a second chance to go to Carnegie Hall was so amazing and I'm so glad that Dr. Z chose to take us with him and that we got this opportunity. 
So. Thanks to each uh, one that shared this morning. It's uh, really awesome.